All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome Facebook. Welcome West Coast Scooters. And um, welcome all scooter enthusiasts and outdoor enthusiasts out there. This is Old Man Dan coming to you from West Coast Scooters. Uh, we're just a group of ordinary people gathering together, riding extraordinary scooters like this one here, um, and creating incredible memories across the West Coast. Uh, one of the things that's most memorable about our rides is, is that we um, are extremely passionate um, and have an extreme drive to helping people who are less fortunate than ourselves. And uh, we kind of pride ourselves on being able to go to communities um, and bring much needed resources to those communities to help those people out. And we like to do it as a group. And so one of the things that kind of spawns or builds our reputation is that people recognize and look at scooter riders a little differently because of our cause and because of what we uh, stand for. Uh, so, you know, if that maybe you or anybody out there that wants to join a group like that and you're on the West Coast, because I mean, it would be ludicrous to join and you're on the East Coast, right? <laughs> or Midwest or Mid East or um, down South or up North. Um, but uh, on the West Coast, um, it's easier to kind of come together and and gather with us to take these beautiful rides across. Uh, in our case, we're in Southern California, but uh, we are planning to do many, many group rides. Uh, you know, upstate Oregon, Washington, uh, you know, Arizona, Nevada. You know, so. You know, so all of, all of those kind of West Coast uh, states are part of our uh, group. So I have with, I have today, you know, this is Grace, my D6 Plus, and this is Mercy. So together I have Grace and Mercy <laughs> all the days of my life. Uh. <laughs> and of course me, you know me, I'm old man Dan. Um, people ask me, what about Heidi? What, are you saying old man Dan? Or, no, it's not O-L-D, it's O-H. And that name came about because, um, you know, I enjoy going out on these rides and I see these fantastic scooters and I like to rate these scooters and I give them anywhere from one to five O's, five at best, one at worst. But it's, it's things that the scooter owner want to say to the manufacturer or to others out there who... Uh, they may want to warn or may want to encourage uh, to get that scooter. So today I'm doing this video because I've been getting a lot of uh, feedback, a lot of talk about uh, the DTX and some of the issues that people are having with their DTX that they can't find videos on. So I decided to do a video on all the things you should know. And so I'm just going to address some some pretty basic things that I came across in uh, with my scooter that were very simple fixes and very basic things we should know about the DTX. Mind you, it's very frustrating when problems arise with your scooter. Very, very frustrating. I'm telling you, I've, I've, had, uh, I've had things that I didn't even know was as simple as they were until until I uh, called my friends down at Mini Motors USA up in San Francisco, John Cooper, um, you know, the guys down there, uh, fantastic. That, that's where I bought my scooter from. They've been outstanding, the service, the, you know. So this video will be, you know, on things that I've been able to fix myself and some things that I've had to take it down to um, John and them. Uh, so, kind of let's dive right in. I want to start off, though, with specs and price. <laughs> you know, uh, 
you know, what well, I, I think probably one of the most insulting questions for people to get about anything they own is how much did you pay? And so, of course, people are kind of hesitant to ask that question. And then there are some that ask it and it's like really weird. So I'm going to drop that right here. You're going to get the price on on this this baby here, what it costs to uh, enjoy the um, conveniences and the luxuries of having uh, a Dualtron X. And uh, then we, I'm going to address the specs. You know, one of the things about this this mean machine, you know, I, I like to call mine a beauty and the beast because she's a beauty, but she's a beast too. Uh, mercy here. Uh, one of the things about this, this scooter is, is that it comes with two dual hub motors that max at 6,720 watts of power. And, and mind you, you hear people say you feel it when you hit that throttle. When you hit that throttle, it's power. Uh, you know, they have one, two, and three settings, but most people that get a DTX, it's gonna always be on three. So it's always gonna be on high speed. It doesn't have a dual and a single. Uh, you know, it doesn't have an eco. It's always fast. <laughs> so, but you can set that one, two, and three, but those are even, you know, have some power. Uh, so that means that this puppy right here has 3,360 watts of power per hub, front and back. Um, the battery on this uh, scooter is a 60 volt, 49 amp hour battery. Um, it's a pretty big battery. It's, it, it comes with, the, um, the main pack is an LG 3500 cell and um, it, it, I mean, to charge it, you're charging about seven and a half hours, 7.5 hours, um, depending on where you're charging at. Some people like to charge at half full. Some people like to charge, you know, every time they come off a ride. You know, um, the only warning I like to give you on charging your battery is do not overcharge your battery. So don't charge it up and go to sleep. Um, the stem, the stem has a 60 volt battery and has three amp hours and uh, 180 watt hours and so uh, but the stem battery is it's for your accessories um, you have these buttons on the side of your stem two on the right side that controls your headlight your uh, your deck lights um, your uh, now your signals in your brake lights they do work even if the stem battery is not working but it it does um, help with some of the some of the features of those lights. Okay, um, things that you can do, you know, you're blinking, you're you know, you can get flashed. It's just so many different features on this uh, on this scooter. But those, but that battery that's in the stem, that's what it controls. Now, it also you also have an accessory uh, USB ports right here where you have the uh, five volt one amp and the 5 volt 2.1 amp uh, USB ports for you know plugging in your your uh, cell phone uh, if you have a navigation system if you have a rear view camera system <laughs> you know like me that you put on your bike that you can uh, see what's behind you but I have to always look back of course it's handy to have uh, handlebar mirrors um, on this because the bar doesn't offer enough space to put two mirrors you'll only have to put you'll only be able to put one and that one should be on your left side the side where the traffic is okay not the sidewalk side <laughs> um, okay another thing um, uh, let's see I did the charging the charging time the charging time for the stem battery is two and a half hours uh, and I'm gonna I don't want to get ahead of myself because I want to talk about you know uh, when your stem battery is bad, and uh, is it your charge or your stem battery, and things like that. Um, your max range on the DTX uh, from the manufacturer is 93 miles. Some people get more, and, and a lot of people get less. Um, but it's all dependent upon the rider's weight, um, your settings, your P settings, um, and um, also your battery charge, your level, where your battery is charged at, the level that your battery is charged at. 
You get a max speed on the DTX of 55 miles per hour uh, from the manufacturer. Some people have said they've gotten 60 and 65, and I don't discount that. It's possible. Um, you could be on a downhill slope. You can be lighter in weight. You know, I mean, <laughs> there are factors that will sometimes surpass what the manufacturer says. Now, remember, though, when you're out on these trails and these bike paths that um, let's be respectful. One thing at West Coast Scooters, we are respectful of the pedestrians, the bikers, the skateboarders, you know, people that are on the bike path. Because one of the things is we don't want to cause such a stink with electric scooters that uh, we get ridden right out of the uh, privilege of riding on these paths, okay? We want to be able to ride on those paths. So be courteous, guys, when you're out there with uh, people that are on uh, these paths. Uh, you know, keep your speed right. The, the speed limit in California is 15 miles an hour. Now, mind you may have a 55 or 60 mile an hour scooter, but just like a Ferrari, it can do 200, but legally you can't go 200 miles per hour on the roads. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, just think about others as you're uh, riding your scooter on those paths and things. Um, the climbing grade uh, for this scooter is 70% or 35 degrees, uh, whichever you are comfortable with. They're both the same thing, but you get a 70% grade. And, and But it's recommended that you don't do hills and things on this scooter. So don't make it a habit of trying to take a DTX on hills all the time. You start to wear out your battery. You start to, uh, you start to uh, degrade the scooter and the scooter may not last you as long as it was made to last. Uh, your braking system. The Dualtron X comes with a hydraulic braking system um, uh, with ABS uh, brakes, um, standard, and you have the 160 millimeter rotors. Uh, it also, um, on this scooter, you have the EBS settings as well that you can set. Uh, me, I, I set both of those on zero. Uh, I did not like how it felt uh, when I engaged EBS or ABS. The ABS had a, <clears throat> you know, just, it was just hard. You know, to me, it can cause an uh, unwarranted accident just because of the jerk. Um, the EBS kicks in, you know, and so uh, even on, even on um, Grace here, it's just a, the V6 Plus, you know, the EBS and the ABS, this, you know, so it's kind of tricky. Some people like it. Some people are very, they like riding with it, you know. Uh, me, myself, no. Um, the max load, 265 pounds. Thank God, because when I got it, I was 225 pounds. But I have since lost some weight, and now I'm 208. Uh, trying to get my metabolism back, and trying to get, you know, my, you know, my mojo back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, the scooter weight, how much this puppy weight without all this extra stuff I have on here, without the seat on it, uh, is 145 pounds. Mine is about 153 pounds. So, uh, but you know, I have things on it. I have, you know, I, I didn't fully like go crazy on accessories, but I like the clean, really nice looking. So I decided to accent uh, some of the things that were already on the scooter and went with my kind of ruby red and black color scheme. <laughs> um, so those are the specs. The price, the price of a Dualtron X is $5,999.99. It's a $6,000 machine, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's very uncomfortable for a lot of people out there. But then there are some people who, you know, Mercedes Benz and BMW and, you know, um, Range Rover are very uncomfortable to accomplish, but they want them. Um, you know, I, I would say don't put yourself in financial jeopardy to get a DTX. There are a lot of nice scooters. Even Dualtron have a lot of nice scooters, but Thunder is an amazing scooter. Um, you know, you got the uh, um, the uh, uh, Mantis, you know, it's an amazing scooter. The, the uh, Zero 08 and the Zero 09, amazing scooters. I mean, so you have you you have some 
amazing scooters out there at lower price points that uh, you would definitely be happy with. And if I didn't name your scooter, don't be upset. You know, I, you know, like I said, I'm trying to get myself together, so that includes my memory. <laughs> um, but uh, um, this Dualtron X is a fantastic scooter. I kind of wrote a couple of notes over here, so I don't leave nothing out. Um, you know, in the market, the Dutron X is considered one of the most comfortable, one of the most stable, one of the most durable, one of the most powerful general scooters in the market. And when I say general, I'm saying, you know, you have scooters that are like super scooters, you know, like the Ryan, you know, you know but when you compare apples to apples, scooters for scooters, scooters that are all made on the same playing field, the Dualtron X rises above everything out there. Um, it is an amazing scooter. I mean, you know, I, I got these two scooters and got another one on the way. And I'm telling you that the scooter, when I go for a ride that I choose most often, is the Dualtron X. It's just a comfortable ride. It's a safe, you feel safe on this ride at no matter what speed. Um, I've taken it to uh, 53 miles an hour. And I'm telling you, it's stable, solid, um, you know, um, and it's got a reputation for that. It, you know, this scooter, you don't see too many, less people are out acting stupid, acting crazy, doing things they should not be doing on uh, a scooter like this. You know, if I want a nimble, quick, and zippy scooter, I'll get on, I'll get on the race here, you know. But when I just want to, like, crew, I mean, it's just like, you know, come on, <laughs> You're not gonna you're not gonna get out there and take the race and do all kind of things you do in your race that you do and you know your Prius or you know your Nissan Sentra or something. You, it's, 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 your whole persona changes. It, you 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 sit in it different. You know you don't speed. You cruise, <laughs> right? So you know that's those are the specs on the Dualtron X. So but it's a really really nice scooter. Um, I, I want to say when when your when your DTX arrives and you crack open that box, you know I did a uh, unboxing. You know you probably see my video there. Uh, but when you open that box, you're greeted you're greeted with a metal cage, and the challenge becomes <laughs> getting that getting that metal cage out of the box. In my case, you see my unboxing. You know it it turned into a kind of a long unboxing because. Uh, I didn't expect to have a metal cage. Um, so I had to cut the box from around the cage because I couldn't lift, I was by myself, couldn't lift the, you know, it's a 145 pound scooter. Then you got the metal cage, you know, that's another nine pounds or so. And so, and then it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really secure in that box. So it's protected when it's being shipped and we all know how our boxes look when we get our boxes uh, from shipping. No matter who, if it's UPS, DHL, uh, FedEx, they all rough these things. They probably mad because they're so heavy. You know, even even the forty five or fifty pound scooter, they don't. Even, that's heavy to them. You know, so they mad. They are pissed that they gotta you know chug along and and, 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 sh and deliver this heavy load. And so the box comes pretty beat up. Um, but um, in this case, the box is pretty solid. You know, um, uh, they didn't have to like grace there. It came in a, a box within a box. Uh, this came a cage within a box. So you get that outer box off, and then I suggest that you, instead of unscrewing, because the, the screws on the metal cage have nuts and bolts. So instead of unscrewing every nut and bolt, just do the ones on the bottom, and then lift the whole cage off the top of it. And now you have access to the scooter, and then you can cut the zip ties, which really holds that thing in place. So you got to make sure you have your hand on your scooter when you pop in that last zip tie because it can fall over. Um, and then, you know, attach your handlebar. And when you attach your handlebar, make sure that uh, all of your controls, you know, your, your horn and light controls, your, uh, your I3 um, display control, uh, your brake levers, you know, your fingerprint sensor, 
Make sure these things are set to your individual personal height level and your visual level. You want to make sure that when you have your hands on that your wrist has this position, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to have it where you're like this. It's going to cause a lot of stress in your wrist and you're going to end up with pain. And you don't want to have it like this. Just like that. You know, just like that. Uh, just like when you're in martial arts and you're taught to fight, you're taught to have a straight level so that these knuckles, it's almost that way, you know. So it, you'll find it's almost the same position. You can, you'll, you'll increase your, um, your ride ability and how long you'll last on riding these scooters without just putting it to the side because it becomes unpleasant. Um, and that, that right there is for any scooter. Set your theme, set your, you know, set your uh, controls on your handlebars to fit you individually. Now, if you share a scooter with someone and that individual is not your exact height, then you're going to have to adjust it for them. And then when you start doing those things, you start making it where your controls get loose on bumps and shakes and things like that. Now, I'll, I, let me say this off the top of the video. I recommend this highly. It's just one of the things I talk about even in our club is that safety always first. I used to own a, a trucking company um, in transportation, I had buses and things too. But one of the things you always have to do in commercial vehicles is you do a pre-inspection first. So keep that in mind with your scooter. Always, I don't care if you're doing a short run, 10 minutes. Do a pre-inspection from front to back. Check your screws, check your brake calipers, check your, you know, your check your, your controls on your handlebar, check your, your um, folding knob or, or whatever is securing your stem or your uh, stem and handlebars to the scooter. Because if that malfunctions, it can cost you your life. So you want to make sure you check. Check your suspension. You know, while you're in the house, you know, check your brakes and everything. Turn your scooter on. You know, I've seen people literally ride it across their floor in their house. And, you know, whatever is whatever works for you, just do the pre just do the pre-trip or the pre-inspection. You want to make sure that your lights work, your 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 amperage is right, that you'll be able to to go on the ride that you're planning. And if you if your if your ride says it's 40 miles and you know you get 35 miles, say you get 40 miles with your scooter based on manufacturer specs, remember your weight and your settings and all of that's going to lower that number. So don't get stranded out somewhere, you know. Uh, like me, take your back, take your battery packs with you, <laughs> you know, in case you do run out of juice out there, you can plug in at a store or a Starbucks or something. Uh, some of them have plugs right outside the store and they don't mind you plugging in for a couple of hours just to get you home. Uh, other than that, you're going to have to call someone with a truck or something to transport your scooter, especially if you have a Dutron X. Uh, you, you're not going to be happy um, pushing a Dutron. If your Dutron X is like mine, then you can't even push it when it's off. So if your battery runs off, your motor is locked. It's part of the security feature. Okay? Uh, so, so just keep those things in mind, you know, and just have fun, but have it safely. Get your, get your safety gear. You've seen all kinds of videos out there with people with busted eyes, broken collarbones, wrists, elbows, stitches, and you know, thank God we haven't seen anyone that's died yet. Um, but get you a DOT regulated helmet. Um, I like full face. I like modular full face. So I like to be able to take that up like get some air. Uh, but, you know, when I get on a long ride and I'm really going because I like to do my speed on longer rides, I'll bring, I'll bring my modular part down and, and, you know, close it in and just open my shield if I have to. Uh, but wear it. Get some elbow pads. Wear some motorcycle gloves. If you need wrist, uh, wrist protection, wear that underneath. Um, you know, and if you're going to do that and it goes all the way to your palms, you're going to have to get larger gloves. You know, make sure you get your, your hip pads, you know, uh, have a back pad. Um, they have all of this, you know, shoulder pads and um, knee pads, uh, you know, even ankle pads. I've seen some terrible ankle injuries. 
protect yourself, you know, and you know, you want to, you want to make sure you're gobbled up, uh, because when you're riding out there, uh, bugs and all of that's going to hit your face. Can you imagine one hitting you dead smack in the eyeball? It's happened. It, you got to be some kind of a super giant to be able to withstand that stinging and that hurt of that bug in your eye and, and to be able to still ride, <laughs> you know, with your eyes wide open. But most people, their first response is they want to take their hand off their handlebar. That's another thing. Never take a hand off your handlebars when you're riding. Keep both hands on. I don't care how good you think you are. Keep both hands on there because some roads look smooth and straight that aren't really smooth and straight. And even, even the pros, the, the best of us, riding with one hand and you hit that, you know. I mean, you know how your scooter reacts when you, you know, get used to your scooter. Learn your scooter, understand how it reacts, how it rides, what makes it tick, and you know, and all that. Understand it's how long the battery lasts. You learn your scooter, ride that, and, and make mental notes or whatever. Write notes when you finish your rides or whatever, but get to know your scooter. Know how it feels, you know, know how the suspension feels, the braking, all of that. You, sh you should, it's just like driving a car. This is not a toy, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to uh, put this in the hands of a kid. You don't want to put it in the hands of a kid. So let's talk about some of the things that are basic uh, features and things that people have problems with on the DTX that they can fix themselves uh, or you know can get it fixed. It's, 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 a lot of it is really easy. So I want to start off with um, stem wobble. Stem wobble and bar wobble. One of the things that I first recognized was I have a little wobble in my stem, you know? So I couldn't find no videos nowhere on the web for the DTX. So almost everything I had to do, you know, trial and error. Uh, you know, since I was doing trial and error on fixes that I've done, I didn't videotape. I didn't want y'all to see me look like a fool on videotape. So I'm creating this videotape so that I can catch you up and then I'm going to start doing video tapes because now I know how to do a lot of things. Uh, some of the things you just got, some scooters you just got to make adjustments on. The scooter is not bad. It just needs adjustments and you need to be aware that some scooters need that. But if you inspect everything, you're going to find out anyway. You know, when you're on the road, you, you're paying attention, you're going to find out anyway. So, in order, the way you fix, the way you fix this, um, Let's say the stem, let's do the stem wobble first. The stem wobble is, you can feel the stem wobble separate from the bar wobble. And there's two ways you can fix the stem wobble. Number one, turn your knob and make sure that the knob uh, is all the way off and then push it in and drop the stem down. When you get ready to pull the stem back up, pull it all the way up, uh, tight and flush. Make sure the line that you see is closed. Not, it's not going to, the gap's not going to completely close. But if the, if the gap has a gap, then you got to do it again. Make sure that that's tight. Once that's tight, then tighten your knob all the way. What I learned about the knob, it does come loose, especially when you do what I've done, and that is to permanently secure your stem. So there are two screws that come with the scooter that you can screw right here at the bottom of the X knob, the um, folding knob. I call it the X knob because it's an X. Um, and you screw those two screws in. Um, and when you screw those two screws in, it locks your stem where you can't fold it. But it also takes the wobble out. <laughs> it removes the wobble. Now, once you do that, what's going to happen is your knob, your folding knob, is going to loosen like on every ride. And so what I did is I got some, some blue Loctite. You might you want blue, which is the removable kind. You don't want permanent Loctite. And I put the blue Loctite on my threads, and now it doesn't loosen at all. So when you use that blue Loctite, you you can literally crack a seal. You can re you can you can unscrew a thing that was Loctite on. But if you get red or something like that, then you may you may never be able to open that thing again. All right. So that's the stem wobble. Now the bar wobble. 
the bar wobble, you feel the shimmy in your bar. The good thing with the Dualtron X is you can even adjust that. So the way you adjust that is you pull, you pull the, um, the knobs that go here that locks your bar in place. You pull it back and you fold down the, you fold down the bar. When you fold down the bar, you're gonna see a little small screw in the back bar. Very slightly adjust it up or down depending on the wobble and play with it. So adjust it, close it back. I like to close mine hard so it'll snap in place rather than go soft and then I gotta push the thing in. So I just close it hard, let it snap in, and I see if I got any wobble. If wobble is still a little, you know, it's, it seems like it's getting better, keep going that direction. If it seems like it's getting worse, go the opposite direction. And you do that on both sides if both sides have wobble. If the other side don't have wobble, don't do it. You can always adjust it again. Um, but that's your, that's, that's how you get the stem wobble and the bar wobble out. Now these two screws that are on the top of the stem, those two screws hold your bars in. So if you have to, if you want to reassign uh, the way that your, your uh, controls are on your bar, you'll, because the, the wire is so short, you won't be able to pull it all the way out the end. So you'll take, you'll crack that screw open and you'll pull the whole bar out now remember it has two washers, a top and bottom washer there, and those two washers can fall out. So keep your eye on those two washers. If they don't fall or anything, then they're stuck pretty good on there. But sometimes the minute you pull out, the washers fall off. You don't want to lose those washers because those washers have to be there to prevent any wobble or any dangerous uh, handling of your scooter. Pull that out. When you pull that out, now you can take the, this, the, um, the controls off of your bar and then you put them back on the way you want them. And that's for both sides. So it's very easy there. Um, you can also remove the grips. Removing the grips that come on your scooter is very difficult until you get this one tool that makes it simple. Can you guess what that is? It's an inflator. It's an air inflator. And you can buy the little you know, um, air inflators from Home Depot and everything, or you can just go to a gas station, stick a, uh, a ball needle on the inflator end and stick that through the hole that's in your grip and you, and you blow that air in there and that grip flies right off like, like it had grease on it. Now, if it doesn't and you have one of the smaller ones that you bought um, from Home Depot or some, set it on 150 PSI and blow that thing. Sometimes you might have to wiggle this while you're blowing it. But the way I did it is I took my palm of my hand and I let the back of the needle rest in the palm so that I'm pushing it on and holding it in place. Because if you don't hold it in place, that needle is gonna blow out. So you hold it in place while you turn on the turn on the air and let it blow. And then you just wiggle this back and forth until it comes loose and then it just comes right off. And then you can put your custom grips on your bars. And that applies to any scooter, you know, even, even on the uh, NAM Robot D6 Plus. Um, you also have um, your a battery that's inside of this stem. And that battery, sometimes coming out the box, you might have a bad charge. That, that happened in my case. I had a bad charger. And what I found out is the charger, when I went to go get on my scooter and everything, the, my voltage was started off at a number and just start going down. But the, the thing I didn't notice was the charger stayed red. The charger stayed red whether it was plugged in or not, even though the voltage was high at first. So that was a warning sign. I called John and them, they told me, oh man, it's your charger. So they sent me another charger, showed me if that thing charged right back up and it was good. But then something happened about a week down the road where all my lights went out and I couldn't get them back on for anything. And I, and I had charged it for a ride the next day. And so uh, what I found out was something very rare that happened and that was that my, uh, my battery in there was bad. Now, I don't know if it got bad when I had the bad charger, it made it bad, but bottom line, it was bad. So that had to be replaced. I had to replace the battery. So if you got, if you have uh, where your voltage is, is, is 
not even showing up and you can't and you can't even get light or power, then the chances are that your stem battery is bad and it needs to be replaced. That's covered under warranty, so you can get that replaced pretty easily. And uh, you know, and if you're scared to kind of go in there and do it, then contact my boys John and Cooper down there at Mini Motors USA, right in San Francisco. And tell them that old man Dan, or just tell them Dan sent you, and uh, they'll take care of you, whether you tell them I did or not. They will take care of you because their customer service is bar none. And I, you know, we all know in the scooter industry, um, you got to be real careful who you buy your scooters from because you can get a scooter and have no customer service whatsoever. Uh, but uh, with uh, Mini Motors USA, uh, the customer service is bar none, A1. A1. Uh, you know, so you want to just make sure you buy from a reputable dealer or a reputable uh, place that will serve. You can reach them, you know, with Mini Motors USA, you can reach them on the phone, you can reach them any kind of way, you can reach them by email, they get right back to you and they will help you. If they can't walk you through it, then uh, they'll find out how you all can best get that scooter to them. Uh, let's see, what else I have on there? Um, I talked about the loosening folding knob and putting a little uh, block tight. Rubbing brakes. <laughs> this aggravates people and they're you're pushing your scooter to go get, you know, get to uh, wherever you're gonna start your ride at and you just hear this and it drives you crazy. Well, I had it on both. So what you have to do is you have to true your rotors, ladies and gentlemen. So when John and them told me I had to true my rotors, I true my rotors, man, I'm not a mechanic. I don't do labor. I don't do labor, man. I hate doing I hate putting stuff together. I did all that when I was younger and my kids were little. Uh, so I, I burned myself out of putting things together and being mechanical. I know a lot of people like that. You know, and man, I thank God for you. Just like I thank God for doctors. Um, but the true your rotor is, you know, you just take your tire when you put it up on a jack, uh, you know, uh, or a motorcycle table, um, uh, you, you just turn like that and you listen for the hiss, right? But you get you a light, a bright light that you can see between the rotor and the disc. And when you turn the wheel, you're going to see where it rubs. Mark that with your hand. Roll that while you're holding the mark with your hand down to the bottom, and then you push in or out depending on where the rub is. If the rub is on the inside, then you pull it out. If the rub is on the outside, then you push it in. And then you turn some more, find out where the next rub. You get all those rubs, you know, you bend them out, and that's called truing your rotors. So you want to true your front and back rotors, and that gets rid of that rubbing, hissing sound very easily. Uh, so you want to make sure that you, you, don't you don't have to panic on nothing. <laughs> you don't have to panic on nothing, beloved. You just calm down and you'll be surprised how easy it is to fix these things. Uh, what else we got? Spongy brake levers. Spongy brake levers. Oh my God, that happens a lot. The good thing about spongy brake levers is sometimes all you have to do is turn on your scooter, uh, play with the accelerator, and just pump the brakes, and it will take care of the sponginess. If that doesn't take care of the sponginess, then you have to bleed your brakes. And most of the guys are familiar with bleeding brakes. You know, you have to unloosen the screw, squeeze, let the, let the um, little fluid squeeze out, and then you do that until it's tight. It's real simple. Real simple. Um, if it's something like me and you're not mechanical and you don't feel like getting on involved like that, then, you know, give my boys John and Cooper a call at Mini Motors USA uh, and, uh, or go to minimotorsusa.com and send them an email or whatever. And I don't know, Dan sent you or Dan refers you in. Um, and they'll help you with your DTX. Uh, let's see. Um... The damper, oh my God. When I first got my scooter, I put my damper on and when I got to 30 miles an hour, it wobbled so hard it almost threw me off the scooter. So I was like, what is this? So I, you know, I went back in, I tried to make some adjustments, took it back down, to, and same thing happened again. I was, I was so scared the second time, man, that I jumped off the scooter and walked it back. 
Um, so I called John Cooper. I said, hey, man, this damper, man, this damper, I might have a defective damper. Blah, blah, blah. So we went back and forth trying to figure out what it is and all that, uh, trying to get the damper all set up and everything. Uh, long story short, I ended up taking my scooter down to San Francisco uh, to get that, get, get that um, problem solved. But it's real important that when you apply, you put your damper on, the screws can only go in one way. And so if they're tight, and most screws on your scooter, don't try to tighten them when they won't go. You should be able to get it started and, and turn it with your finger a good distance before you can't turn no more. That lets you know that it's in the grooves. Other than that, it'll strip. It's real easy for the threads to strip if, you're, if you don't have them in true or straight. So with this, you know, you just keep going back and forth till you get it. Um, me, I like to look at the way it should sit, and and you know, so I I went, I saw this video, but it was in Chinese. The talking was in Chinese. Everything. All I needed to do was just see with my eyes how it was positioned, and so I saw how it was positioned, and so I got it in there. Then you start, then you can adjust it. It's got a 16 position, and you can adjust it to your comfortability. Um, I took it down there, and I let John and them set it for me and everything, so that. I didn't have that wobble problem, and that was a drive tip, but I, I just wanted to make sure my scooter was safe. Uh, the other thing is suspension. Setting your suspension to your weight. If you're heavier like me, remember I was 220 pounds, you want to set your back stiffer. Remember, going, going clockwise is looser, going counterclockwise is stiffer. So you want to go counterclockwise, but there's some screws in there. You, you loosen the screw, like down here at the knob, there's a uh, screw with an Allen key. You loosen that screw, go counterclockwise, and then you adjust it for, if you're heavy, you want it stiffer, lighter, you want it not so stiff. At first, I didn't have my set stiffer, and when I would take off, it would dump, <laughs> it would dump in the back, you know. Especially when I put that seat on there. Um, but now I have it just right. So you gotta play with it to get it just right. It might take you a few rides, a few days, and you know, to get your, you know, remember, don't set your, don't set your front the same as your back. Your front should not be as stiff as the back. Just a little, you know, like wherever you have your back, then you set the front just a little bit down. And that'll, that'll really guarantee your comfortable ride. Um, what else do I have on that on my notes? Let's see here. Uh, I talked about the faulty charge and the decrease in the charge. Um, the accessory lights not turning on, your suspension, removing the hand grips. Tightening the kitty bar, yeah, that seems small, but when you start putting things on this top kitty bar, you find out that they start turning when you're driving and hitting all the bumps and everything. Well, you can tighten this. You just twist it until it's tight. It's just that simple. It's just that simple, really. Um, your, your front headlight, it may come from packing, it may come a little crooked. There, almost everything on here is adjustable. So all the screws, you can get to them. So what I had to do is take my whole light off and adjust this screw here and then to get my light straight, because I'm OCD, man. My stuff has to be like perfecto. So that means my lines gotta be straight. And so um, so got the lines all straight and everything. And you know, it was a, it was an easy, easy, easy fix. An easy fix. Um, you got a kitty bar down here on the bottom. Not all of them come with this kitty bar, but uh, this is a good kitty bar. Now, if you don't have a damper, what happens is this hose right here can get caught on that kitty bar. You gotta be real careful. So what I did in the beginning before I put my damper on is I squeezed the hose in so that it almost had a shape like an eight, a half of an eight, you know? And what that did is it poked out this side where when you turn it didn't get caught on the kitty bar. Another simple, simple fix. Another thing, um, you want to do, remember you have 13 inch pneumatic tubeless tires here that are five inches wide. That one, that's one of the things that help with your stability in, in such a good ride as well because it dampens a lot of the bumps just like the, of course you see these motorcycle shocks on here, you know, so you know that's, <laughs> when, when people look at this scooter, it's like, whoo, man, that thing looks like a beast. 
and she is. That's called it a beauty and the beast. But right out the box, you can get you some ride on. I don't I don't recommend the green stuff. I don't even want to call it by name. But I'll I'll recommend ride on, which is orange or either armadillo's blue. Uh, ride on is eight ounces per tire. Armadillo's blue is four ounces per tire. And you have to ride them for about five to ten miles to get it to set good in your tires. So I suggest the minute you do your uh, your additive, your 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 flat tire preventive additive, that you take it out for a ride. And if you can get your five or ten miles in that one ride, by all means get it. So because what that does, it kind of sets the ride on is a real good balancer. It it almost it balances. So you just, you see some people wondering. Man, how can I balance my tires, balance my tires? It's a real good balancer, man. It balances your tires. So by the time you get that 10 miles in, uh, you notice that your, your ride is smoother. It's smoother. The good thing about armadillos, they have those fibers and things in the armadillos that really work. That blue is for scooters. So, but it's speed sensitive. So depending on your speed will determine which color you get on the armadillos. But the blue, um, I think that's like 50 miles and under, somewhere around there. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it, it's it's pretty good. I, I like armadillos and I like ride on. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, last but certainly not least. <laughs> this seat, if you order a seat for your Dualtron X, you see how beautiful it is. It doesn't come like this. It doesn't look like this out the box, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that seat is in pieces. Screws and everything is in all little pieces. So you got to put that thing together like a puzzle. So make sure you separate all your screws and nuts and things first so you can get. And then try to look on, you know, my video or something so you can get an idea of how it's supposed to look. And use that, that visual as a template, as your template. I didn't really have the time. I was like going all over, like trying to look at all kinds of things to see the template. And then you just got to put that thing together. It may take you two days to put your seat together. Uh, but once you get it together, man, you, it's it's a proud moment because you actually put it together. I mean, you put it on your scooter. It, it's beautiful. Now, in the beginning, I felt crowded on my, because the deck on a Dualtron X is not that wide. It's not that long. It's wide, but not that long. And so, um, Oh, and I got a custom deck coming in. I can't wait to get that thing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but you'll you'll notice the shortness. You it, it crowds you, so you got to learn how to ride your scooter with the seat on it without it crowding. And that's what I did. I, you have to readjust your positioning. And then also when you're riding your scooter, try to keep your knees bent. Straight straight legs is not good when you're riding. So keep your knees bent, and you want to always keep the weight one foot and one foot. Don't have your two feet together here in the middle. Put one foot up here and one foot back there and keep them apart, and keep them apart this way. That gives you more control of your scooter, gives you your, and, and the flatter your feet are on the deck, the more security and the more secure and the more in control you feel. And that's on any scooter, on any scooter. As you get better and better, then you can probably ride your back toes by putting your scooter on a kick plate or something like that. But I wouldn't suggest that in the beginning. Um, what else? I think that's about it. Um, I don't think there's nothing else we can talk about. You know, um, later we'll probably talk about accessories and all that kind of stuff. But to me, that really, that's really not important right now. What's important is that you understand some of the things on the scooter that people are having a problem with. You know, a lot of the screws on the Dualtron X are really tight in, really good in the beginning, so you don't have to worry about that. And so because I believe they use a, a, a thin bead of Loctite <clears throat> uh, when they're putting the scooter together. And so, um, but remember, as we close out on this video, safety first, pre-trip, no matter how short the trip. And when I say pre-trip, that means go over your scooter from front to back, get your system. You know, so that your pre-trip only takes you a short time, but you cover everything. 
You know, you want to check your, you want to check your folding knob. You want to check your brakes. You want to check your screws. You want to check, you know, all of those important things. Your, your um, handlebars and make sure that they're tight and your stem is tight and your stem is locked in. You want to check your brakes. Make sure they work before you go out. You want to make sure your, your shocks and, and are, are not loose and, and no bolts are missing on very important pieces. Shouldn't be no bolts missing on nothing. So make sure that you know that you check those things. You know if you have a damper, check your damper. Make sure the screws are tight. Uh, you know, and then check your voltage. Make sure you have the proper voltage for the right trip, and uh, carry your battery packs with you uh, so that you can charge while on the road. And uh, and just have fun, guys. Have fun out there. And if you want to hook up with West Coast with West Coast scooters, hook up with us. We're on Facebook. W S like Sam. Coast Scooters, and that's on every social media. So it's WS Coast Scooters for uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, you know, all of them. It's the same username. All right, till next time, we'll see you later. And we say, you know, remember, keep it safe out there.